Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. In this video, I'm beginning a new series called Introduction to Methods of Qualitative Research. Um, it's important to understand that like um, the hard sciences, like physical scientists, social scientists also have various methods of research. Um, and like the scientific process, we're in um, uh, laboratory assistants, researchers, graduate assistants use the scientific method in order to test their hypotheses, in order to make sure that their findings are reproducible. Similarly, um, social scientists also have methods and mechanisms, methodologies that they use in order to um, assess and interpret the data that they get from interviews and surveys. Um, the whole point of this series is to address, um, I, I'm going to cover I think five of the forms, various forms of qualitative methods research. The first that I'll be doing is narrative research. After narrative research, I'm going to do a, a section on um, uh, phenomenological research. After phenomenological research, I'm going to do uh, participatory action research. After that, I'm going to do grounded theory. After grounded theory, I'll do um, ethnography, and after ethnography, I'll close it with um, uh, case studies research. So I'm going to go through, I think that was five, uh, narrative, phen phenomenological, participatory action, grounded, uh, ethnography, and case studies. It's actually six. So I'm going to do um, six different um, series of videos within this larger series of videos. Um, it's going to be, uh, you know, several, several uh, videos long, you know, more than 20, maybe 30, 40 videos long, um, giving you a very introductory, but a very in-depth in introductory account to the various methods of qualitative uh, research. Um, with that being said, I want to begin today with the first of the six accounts, which will be narrative, uh, narrative research. Okay, so this is an introduction, introduction to methods of qualitative research. So this is the introduction to methods of qualitative research. Um, as always with the videos, if you want to gain access to um, my research notes, um, just click the banner that will pop up above the video. It'll take you to the PDF. Download the PDF and you can follow along. Or you can click the uh, description, uh, the link in the description field. It'll take you to the PDF. Download the PDF, follow along. All right, so this will be section 1.1. So this is um, narrative research. The book that I'm using for most of this is uh, John W. Creswell's um, Qualitative Inquiry and Research Design, Choosing Among Five Approaches. Um, so we're going to be using uh, the second edition of Creswell. This is a SAGE publication. Um, it's not important that you have that particular version. I'm using that version to um, guide the narrative, but I'm also, I also have uh, quite a bit of supplementary information. Uh, for example, when we do, um, if I can grab it, participatory action research, I'll be using uh, Alice McIntyre's uh, qualitative research method series, um, and this is on participatory action research. I use Yin for, uh, I think, case studies. Use different authors to supplement um, uh, the original text. So this, this lecture, these series of lecture, these series of videos, and all the various forms of uh, qualitative research um, is, a, is a sort of amalgamation of you know, several authors' piece, but I use the, uh, the Creswell text as sort of the main template to guide um, the lecture. All right, so again, that's from Creswell. All right, so the first thing that we want to recognize um, are the uses for narrative research, right? Um, we're going to talk, I'm going to separate the discussion of the uses for, uh, for narrative research uh, in, two, in two parts. The methods for researching using narrative research and also the phenomena of narrative research. So let's begin uh, at that point. So this will be two uses of narrative research. Okay. The first is, as I said, a method of research. First is a method of research, and, and here goes a quote uh, from Creswell. Um, quote, a spoken or written text, a spoken or written text 
giving an account of an event or series of events, actions, chronologically connected, right? A spoken or written account, um, which is giving an account of an event or series of action, and it happens chronologically, right? Um, the way that social scientists who are interested in implementing narrative research go about their, their research uh, are a number of ways, and what I want to do is to take time for those of you who are watching who might be interested in using narrative research as your method of um, qualitative research to give you an introduction to um, narrative research. Um, for the most part, the majority of people that watch my videos are primarily graduate students, master students, PhD students, um, within the social scientists. Um, so if you are one of those students and, and what I'm discussing seems like it might be appealing to you, narrative research might be the, the mode of research that you use to guide your thesis or your dissertation um, um, investigation. All right, so what are the implementations, right? How do we implement this? And I don't assume this to be exhaustive. Um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we select our subjects. Right? We want to make sure that we select our um, subjects. For narrative research, it's important to recognize, and I think I'll talk about this in a little bit, it's important to recognize that um, narrative research um, is going to be firmly grounded in uh, the tradition of storytelling, in folklore, in an oral tradition. Um, you have two modes of, of, in a sense, two modes of analyzing um, events, grossly, right? Um, in selecting our subjects, in the process of interviewing our subjects, so here's our participants, we'll call our subjects participants, and here we are as researchers, right? Um, there's going to be an exchange of information between the researcher and the participant, right? The researcher is going to ask questions, the participant is going to give us answers to those questions, and so on. Very, and as I said, this is going to be very introductory, right? So I, as a researcher, I'm going to ask participants information, right? Um, when I'm selecting my subjects, I want to make sure, especially if I'm using a narrative no novel, a uh, narrative approach rather, that my approach elicits, right, it pulls from the participants information or data that I'm going to need, and that data is going to reinforce an oral tradition, right? So you have a textual, and you have an oral, you have an, a textual and oral tradition of storytelling. Um, in a narrative approach to research, right, in narrative research, what I'm looking for um, are the oral traditions that typify, that identify, that classify um, a particular person's life history, a particular group of people's history, and the mode of engaging individuals in this storytelling, in this storytelling, is going to facilitate a better understanding of the individual or the community, what have you. Um, I've actually, I haven't done, well, I, I partly dabbled a little bit in, uh, in narrative um, research, but I have written fictionally about it. And what I did was, just to give you sort of an example of how you might implement uh, narrative research, one of the things that I wanted to do was to look back on um, the effects that segregation, especially within an educational environment, had on um, young black uh, men and boys um, during the time prior to um, Brown versus the Board of Education. Um, Brown versus Board of Education hits, um, and the schools are mandated to integrate, but Prince Edward County in um, Virginia, unfortunately, did not want to integrate, and they found a mechanism of, they created a mechanism of going around that um, by making all the formerly public schools private schools, and you needed a voucher system to get in. Obviously, black people never got voucher tickets, and so on and so on. So, um, what I thought would be an interesting narrative to tell, or an interesting story to tell, and I, I, I writ, I, I've written on this um, fictionally, is what happened to the, the young boys who found themselves uh, one summer not having an opportunity to go back to school the next year. And not only not going back to school the next year, never having access to education from, you know, fourth or fifth grade on. Um, so you can imagine someone with this experience, with this life experience, has an amazing story to tell, right? When I was young, it was my last, my last time that I attended public high school when I, was when I was in the fifth grade. Uh, I never went to any um, schooling after the fifth grade because of what happened in my county. 
um, my family was too poor to move to any other county, and here are the effects that the loss of education had on my personal lived experience. Um, we'll get into more lived experience accounts when we get into phenomenology, but you can see how that particular story, right, that particular story from that particular individual can represent a broader, it's not saying that it does represent, but it can represent a broader, a more holistic picture of the effects that segregation had on the nation as a whole, right, from that one story. We're not going to generalize across the board, but it is an indication of the effects that it might have had. This would be, that, that and I'm, the reason why I'm giving you this is an example, in selecting my subject, I want to find a subject that has a rich story. That would be a rich story. It's up to you and your committee members, um, your, whoever's helping you guide your research to determine whether or not the individual has a rich enough story um, that will justify whatever research that you're attempting to do, or whatever research question you're attempting to ask and address. But I use that as an example so that you can see um, uh, sort of the effects that we as researchers can have on the participants and giving them the space and I'll talk about this later, and giving them the space to disclose uh, very personal uh, information.